Now, what I've done for these um, these seven properties is I've given them all names. The reason why is because I did used to, in the past, um, I have taught them as... Um, I have taught them as a disconnected list of um, just algebra. You know, just here you go. Here's a whole bunch of notation. Um, but I find it very hard. Number one, I find it very hard to remember. Number two, it's very hard to understand what they mean without giving something like a brief summary. Now, these names are not official at all. In fact, for some of them, I will even, like, you'll be like, are you serious? That's a name. And I'll even put quote marks around it. But hopefully, it'll be justified and it'll help you remember what these actually mean. Okay? So, what we'll start with is... Um, We'll start with three simple ones, which you guys already know, they come from the two unit and extension one courses, but they form a very important foundation for the other ones which are a little bit harder. Okay, so I call these three, one, two, three, the reverse property, the dummy property, and the symmetry properties. Okay, the reverse property, the dummy property, and the symmetry properties, because there's two of them. So the reverse property talks about when you have a definite integral. So we're, these are all our definite integrals. They're all about where you've got some boundaries and you're thinking about areas. The reverse property talks about when you integrate a, an interval, but you integrate it in reverse. Okay. So rather than going from a small value to a big value, what happens if you go from a big value to a small value? So if I say from A to B, and you've got some kind of function, right? And I compare that to what happens if I go rather than from A to B, from B to A, right? Same, same integrand and everything, right? Uh, what is the relationship between these two? Okay. Now you you might actually know what this is, but quickly, and I'm not going to cloud our working here like with all of these proofs, but just so you can see the basic guts of how this works. Okay. If I were to say evaluate this right hand side, right? So this is not the order we're used to. If if A is the smaller number and B is the bigger number. Okay, so just off on the side, think about what would happen here. If you said the integral from b to a of f of x, right? Now remember, we don't know what this um, what the integral is. You know nothing about it. I'm just saying for any any function you like. So you're going to end up with a primitive function, which by convention we usually call f prime, capital F, right? And you evaluate it at the same boundaries, right? But you're evaluating it in an unusual order. Okay. Now, just by definition of what a definite integral here is, what would the next line be? It'll be capital F, your F prime, of you're going to do the upper boundary, which in this case is the smaller number, right? And then you're going to subtract, you're going to take the difference of the other boundary, which happens to be a bigger one, okay? Now, what's weird about this is, like, it connects to this in that it's exactly the same, but it's... Well, it's in reverse, isn't it, right? Like we would say, if I slap a minus sign at the front, then, good morning, this guy's going to come out the front, he's going to be positive, take away this guy, right? And that's what we're used to seeing when we integrate normally, right? You've got the upper boundary, which is the big number, take away the smaller boundary, so that makes sense, right? So therefore, the, good morning, therefore the relationship between these is simply a relationship of negatives, right? If you integrate over an interval, you do it in reverse, instead of going from small to big, you go big to small, everything is turned into the exact negative, okay? So you can see why I call this the reverse property, because you're doing it in reverse. The dummy property, again, one that we're very, very familiar with, if you have an integral, right? Uh, from A to B, this, this variable of integration that you're choosing here, because it's a definite integral, it's just standing in temporarily. It's going to get replaced by A's and B's as soon as you've actually finished the actual work of integrating, right? Therefore, being that the X is just standing in, you can put anything in its place. You can call that anything you like, right? So you could say um, F of T dt. Just have a different function and integrate with respect to a different variable. It doesn't matter that you're calling it T. T is just a temporary dummy variable, a label that you put on there. You can have anything you like. We've seen f of u, we've seen f of theta. Whatever variable you've got there, it's just standing in for the time being until your actual boundaries can pop in. Okay, so I've warmed you up a little bit. These are the kinds of things we're talking about. What do you think this is about? Well, we're talking about functions and symmetry and the fact that there are two of them. What do you think? Okay, very good. So we're talking about odd and even symmetry. Now, these are mainly talking about when you have 
symmetrical boundaries, right? So symmetrical, good morning, symmetrical functions, odd and even, symmetrical boundaries, negative a to a. Now, depending on whether you are odd or whether you're even, you will get one of two different things if you're going from negative a to a. Let's think about for the odd case first. If you're the odd case, and we're thinking about, you don't have to draw this, you think about something like, oh, I don't know, uh, here's an odd function, okay? That's, what's that, x cubed minus x or something like that, okay? Because it's odd, and you integrate from the same distance over this side to that side, for example, go from negative one to one. What's gonna happen when you evaluate that integral? You just get zero because you've got a negative and a positive, or a positive and a negative, whatever you get, if it's odd, you'll get zero. On the other hand, if f is even, right, and you don't need me to draw an even function for you to demonstrate this, good morning, you've got the same, both positive or both negative areas on either side because you've got reflectional symmetry here, right? So instead of getting zero and cancelling out, how are we going to articulate this? Yeah. Okay. Two. So I'm going to double, right? Rather than from negative a to a, yeah, you just go halfway, half of that bound, half of that interval, right? Which is not to a. I suppose you could also say negative a to zero. Those would be the same thing. Uh, but this is probably easier because everything stays positive. So you're going to get double of that integral provided f is even. Okay. Right, now, like I said, these are all pretty uh, standard, actually standard exactly what they are, and um, these, these all fit in the two unit and extension one courses. They don't come up very frequently, which is why we're dealing with them now, but as two unit and extension one students, we can understand this, okay? 